Uh, hello, I am Sam from West Papua. I would like to tell some stories about what's happening in West Papua since 1960s up to now. About the forest, about the plants, about the animals and about human beings who live there. West Papua is north of Australia. It's in New Guinea, western half of New Guinea Island. Yeah, there are plants and animals like uh, kangaroo, cassowary, crocodile, bird of paradise. Most of them are similar to those in Australia. And according to some reports, about 7% of the world's flora and fauna are found in, in the New Guinea Island. There is peace and harmony in the life between the all, all beings in the in West Papua but uh, at the moment there are so many many problems. Irian Jaya is one of the most isolated places on earth much of it still unmapped and unexplored. It is the most easterly province of Indonesia and 2,000 miles from the capital Jakarta but its days of isolation are over. To the Indonesian government, this is virgin land, waiting to be opened up to settlers from the overcrowded west. It's about more than 22% of world languages and ethnic groups in, in New Guinea Island itself. And in West Papua we have uh, 245 ethnic groups and languages and uh, quite diverse culture. And, uh, uh, but generally, people call themselves as Highlander and Lowlander, with Highlander staple food of Highlander sweet potato and Lowlander with sago. These are two different characteristics, but all of, all of the people are called Melanesians or Papuans. Mentally, they are very happy very happy uh, all, all the time. They tell jokes, they laugh, they sing, they dance. Most of the houses you can hear songs in the evening. Or in the garden, when uh, parents are in the garden, children sing songs, dance. They are, they are mentally happy, but physically they are suffering because of almost they, they are bombed, they are chased, they are pushed away from their lands. Ini ulat manusia biasa makan. Ulat kumbang muda ini atau tua ini itu bisa makan. Makan mentah begini juga bisa. Begitu. Makan mentah enak sekali ini ulat. Development is really for companies and governments because 
develop if, if development were po for people, people would have been better than now. If, we, if you go there, we will see people still pin we're using wearing pinish cord. The education is very poor. No, not not so many people are educated. Just left. What? But the destruction of forests is very quick. In only t 20 years, the forest almost cleared up. Almost everywhere is no forest anymore. And also the mining of gold and, and copper is almost finished. Many mountains almost become flat and become valleys. It's faster than development of people. There is an, uh, also destruction done by logging companies. Logging companies clearing up the forests very, very quickly. <laughs> After Brazil, Indonesia has the largest remaining rain rainforest on the planet. And since there has been pretty widespread destruction of the tropical forest in Kalimantan and Sulawesi and Sumatra and the other islands, the uh, exploitation has moved to West Papua. The destruction of the West Papuan forest has, uh, has many aspects. First of all, of course, there is logging. There are the logging concessions. and According to the SCEPI, which is one of the 10 or 20 so uh, Indonesian environmental groups, more than 70 percent of the forest lands of West Papua have been granted to concession holders. I think the other thing is that it is not only the logging, it is also road building and dam building and other projects undertaken by the Indonesian government that are wrecking not only the forest but the lives of the people who live off the forest and to whom forest is home. They are, they, they, are, they are cutting down the trees very, very rapidly because they are worried if people are aware of it later, in some ten years, five years later, they will stop them. So since they started last ten, ten, fifteen years, they're, they're really cutting them very, very quickly. If it's very clear when we fly up to the highlands and come down to the lowlands. Just in some weeks, we can come back and up, go up. We can see very, very clear that it's clear up very quickly. <laughs> Islands, they can't survive in the, in the lowland where malaria were hot, but the government they don't care. They just throw them down. And from Java, they just push them out from Java, and as trans migrants, like that. Trans migrants is more, more even even more alien to them, because it's crossing f very far away from Java to West Papua. Different culture, different terrain, different island. They really suffer, but they never say we are suffering because they feel they are getting land and they are getting more support from the government. But culture, I think culturally they suffer a lot. They must adapt to their culture in West Papua. And West Papuan people, they also hate them because they think, oh, this is, these are the people taking our lands. And they are pushed away. They, while they are being settled over here, tribal people are pushed away. They still watch them every day. To an Indonesian government under pressure from the highest population densities in the world, the forests of Irian Jaya are an irresistible temptation. For the sake of the development of the country itself, it will be necessary to broaden the base of development into whole Indonesia. And therefore, it is important that there will be and redistribution of population to the less 
densely populated part of Indonesia. Kita harus masuk dan bertahan di tengah rawa, karena di sana kita. Ya, kepala memang kebetulan terdapat, tetapi sayang hancur sama segala. Bapak masuk di hutan, ikut perjuangan. Kebetulan musuh serang. Tiba-tiba bunyi ledakan. Kebetulan hujan lebat. Was Papua was called Irian Jaya in the past until December 99, and then starting from January 2000 they called West Papua now. It was called Irian Jaya, which is a political name. It is not a name of a tribe or a name, a name of an ethnic group. It is just a political name, which means uh, follow the Republic of Indonesia and the Netherlands. So it is an acronym. Um, this is one of the ways people are demanding we are not Irian, Irianese or Irian giants, as people are calling, we are Papuans. So President now has started to return our identity as Papuans. Basically missionaries, I can use the word terrorize people actually. They terrorized the people, tribal people all human beings, they have terrorized us all, but we still call them as good, they are messengers of good news. They don't uh, realize that the Indonesian need the church to do uh, the whole uh, difficult work in, in West Papua. Why, the first people who goes out to the remote area, they are priced. They go to the people, to the unknown people in, in the area. Then they try to establish small villages, permanent villages there. And after they will build the airstrips. And then the army is coming in with uh, military uh, staff people to pressure them down. So the Indonesians really need the church. That means uh, they need the, the planes to bring up uh, all the, the military staff to bring up the, the goods they need like uh, the food, the, the arms and, and everything like that. Why? The military has no planes and has no pilots to go up to the mountains to the small strip and land there and bring uh, all the support up to the mountains. So they need really the church for this work. And if you you work more than, than 50% for the military, you, you can't uh, call them uh, mission work. So if we um, fell a tree, then we first had to ask him, I need you for my kids, for my mother, or this, it means we know exactly we are, we, what are we doing with ecology. But now, if you see the uh, multinational operations in New Zealand, take for example uh, Freeport Company, it's damaging the whole ecology, not only for a few tribes, 
but for the whole country. The tribal people have been forced to deliver cheap labor. They do not get any compensation. And if they protest it, they will be tortured for that. And at the end, they will be killed for the fact that they uh, ask for better salary or better treatment. But this, the company and the governments in general do not respect. The, the only thing they need is the wood, is the fish, or the gold, or the copper. And they are not interested in the rights of the local, local people. Most of the capital comes from the United States, from Japan, and from South Africa. Those are the main investors in West Papua. Yeah, we consider any foreign company operating in West Papua as thieves because we are the righteous owner of the country, of the land, and what's on it, and what's around it, and what's in it, under it. But still, the, these companies do not deal with the West Papuans. They deal with the Indonesian government. I think we have a message for so-called developed people, developed nations. We, we are wonderful. We have a wonderful culture. A culture which is, can cope with ecology. But we are now going to doubt whether what you learn us is the better way of life. I don't know. Singkatan dari Organisasi Papua Merdeka. Papua Merdeka yang diorganisasikan. Nah, organisasi seperti itu tidak ada di sini. It was Stalin's Soviet colonization program which bred so much resentment. But even today, and far from world attention, one nation, Indonesia, continues a similar policy of social engineering. The Indonesian government is shifting four million people from overpopulated Java and Bali to less populated islands like Irian Jaya, where, as David Pierce reports, native Papuans are resisting the colonization because it threatens their very survival as a separate race. For 20 years, the Papuan Freedom Movement, the OPM, has been fighting a guerrilla war in the jungle. Saya ini orang Papua asli. Untuk saya mesti tinggal di atas daratan Papua ini. Tetapi orang lain yang tidak punya hak dalam ini datang mengambil alih untuk dia mesti menempati dalam daratan Papua. Dan sedangkan saya orang asli Papua ini saya mesti lari ke sasa cari jalan untuk saya hidup. Sebenarnya ini saya punya tanah. The battle that is taking place in Irian Jaya between a modern state with nation-building ambitions and a traditional hunter-gatherer society has been fought many times before in North America, Africa and the Amazon. But the outcome is always the same. Di abad-abad yang lalu, kita bangsa Papua sudah menikmati kebebasan. Kemudian datang zaman kolonialisme mulai dengan jayaan Inggris, kemudian Belanda, dan sekarang kolonialisme Indonesia ini mengakibatkan kebebasan kita hilang. Organisasi Papua Merdeka atau OPM telah berjuang selama 20 tahun lebih berperan dengan pemerintah maupun tentara Indonesia dengan hanya memakai alat-alat tradisional kita yaitu panah busur, tombak, dan lain-lain tetapi bila pasukan kami atau OPM diperlengkapi dengan peralatan militer bisa berhadapan dengan tentara Indonesia karena medan-medan di rimba dapat dikuasai oleh OPM Jadi sudah ada kemungkinan-kemungkinan 
untuk kita bisa segera eh, mencapai tujuan kemerdekaan bagi bangsa Papua. Kita menyerah kembali dan sekarang nanti saya datang buka pos OPM, bertahan OPM di sini. Supaya bapak-bapak saya ikut kita berperang dengan Indonesia. Tidak boleh kami dengan kami baru bahu bunuh itu tidak baik. Tidak baik. Karena kita ini kulit sama. Kecuali Indonesia, nah itu boleh. Kita bisa berperang. Berperang usir kaum penjaya dan kita merdeka sendiri. Ini apa? Ini apa? Ini apa? Ini apa? Ini apa? Kita mau mengalahkan kaum penjajahan neokolonialisme Indonesia dan supaya Indonesia mereka akan pulang ke negerimu dan kita mau merdeka jadi negaramu. Nama negara West Papua. For 20 years, Kualik has moved through these forests preaching war against Indonesia and the giant Freeport gold mine which had come onto his land. Uh, do you think it's right to call these people terrorists, those uh, people OPM, from that movement OPM? Uh, the terrorist term is uh, given by the United States uh, to many liberation movements in the world. And it is now also used by many governments. Uh, also many NGOs use this term. Liberation movement is liberation movement. To, it's, uh, it's a movement to fight against the, the real terrorists, the governmental terror, terrorists, the, the, the terrorists of the states. So the question is, who is actually the terrorist? Dari tahun 84 kita datang di sini dan kita hidup tidak takut-takut begitu tinggal mendukung OPM dan anak-anak ini tidak takut-takut. Sekarang ini masih kecil-kecil tidak apa-apa orang tidak ada pikiran. Kalau sudah besar ada pikiran dan mereka juga akan ikut begitu. Thank you, Papa.